Welcome to the first advanced lesson in the Journey into Cryptography series. These lessons come out of key questions that viewers have asked after watching the entire series. And in this case, the question by Norwood Paul was, I would like to hear more on prime factorization. The math exercise of it was cool and it's fun to see an application here. So that's what we are going to do. And just to recap, in the series we introduced public key cryptography and we looked at one construction RSA and remember RSA depended on one fact which was given the number n it is hard to find the prime factorization of n and when n grows very 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 large it takes a long time to break it down into its prime factors so not only prime factorization, but RSA also depended on it being easy. So remember, f factorization is hard, and we'll get into what hard and easy mean, but it takes a long time uh, for a large input. It has to be easy to just generate a prime. If you recall in RSA, Alice had to generate two random primes and then multiply them together to get n. And to be able to do those, you must be able to at least do the following, which was given some number x, can you just tell me if x is prime or not prime, which is composite? So this is kind of the core question that Norwood Paul asked. It's where we're going to begin. Given x, is x prime or composite? And we'll build from there. And this defines our prime adventure. And we're going to continue now with some quotes. We'll return back to 1770 and look at what Leonhard Euler said. At the time, mathematicians have tried in vain to discover some order in the sequence of prime numbers, but we have every reason to believe that there are some mysteries which the human mind will never penetrate. Okay, and 30 years later, here's a quote from Gauss, the problem of distinguishing prime numbers from composite numbers and resolving composite numbers into their prime factors is known as one of the most important and useful in arithmetic all methods have been all methods that have been proposed thus far are either restricted to very special cases or are so difficult that they try the patient patience of even the practiced calculator the dignity of science itself seems to require that every possible means be explored for the solution of a problem so elegant and so celebrated. Wow. So these two great thinkers have really set the stage for the challenge ahead of us. And now I'm going to fast forward to 2010 and show you a paper that came out of the RSA competition, which is a competi competition that no longer runs, but the purpose of the competition was to put out a large number and say, can anyone factor it? So in 2010, this winning team factored a 768-bit number, and that means it was a 232-digit number, if you're thinking in base 10. So this team in 2010 they won the competition by factoring a 232 digit number. So that's how far we have come from, um, from, you know, Euler to, or we can go back to Euclid, but from Euler to 2010, we're at 232 digit numbers. And here was the answer in their paper. So this was the first prime. This was P1 and this was P2. So this is the state of the art right now. Okay, how did they factor this number, and what is the state-of-the-art techniques? Well, we're going to go back and build from the beginning. And this kind of defines computational number theory. That is the topic of this adventure. So what does computational number theory mean? Well, computation comes from the Greek word for gravel. Stones were used for counting. Computation is any type of calculation, whether you're using stones, or a ruler, or a slide rule, or a calculator, or this cool looking machine, which is Babbage's Difference Engine, which was a hand-powered calculator. It doesn't matter what you're using, or you're using a computer. You're doing some sort of computation. And now, what kind of computation are we doing? Number theory. And that involves this mysterious distribution of prime numbers. 
studying this distribution. And what we're actually looking at is multiplicative number theory, which is questions of how do you factorize numbers? How do you tell me if a number is prime? And so forth. And we begin with a very simple question. Or not a question, a challenge. We need to build a machine which takes an input, and that input is some integer x, and all that machine needs to do is output true or false. And that is the first step. Now we will use the computer science tool to actually build this machine together. And one of the questions that we'll, we will be asking is two things, two aspects to this machine. How much time, that's a clock, how much time does it take to give the solution? And how much space does it need? And when I say space, I mean, for in the case of this mechanical calculator, physical space, how many rooms do we need to hold our machine? Or if we're using a computer, how much memory does it need? So we will be returning to these two ideas as we go.